How's it going, guys? So this is for my scene specifically. I want the player to be able to collect all four pieces. And whenever they enter in front of this puzzle piece panel, I want them to be able to put in all the pieces. So I started working on the script and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make a tutorial video on this. So is what we're going to do. I've already created two scripts. The two scripts I have created are the action cam, the action camera animation and the puzzle piece panel. So is what I want to do is I already know that whenever I have all four pieces, I want to call the actual the action cam animation and I want it to show that okay, all the pieces are in, this door is lit up, this main door is now opening because this is the last thing the player will have to do. So the first thing I want to do is create a serialized field and I'm going to say of type action camera animation. This is just going to be called NM, cam NM specifically. I'm then going to create a start method group. I'm going to say cam NM equals NM dot get component and the component type we are getting is action camera animation. So the next thing we want to do is we want to see if the player is within the trigger area. So we're going to have to call on trigger enter 2D. And we're going to say if collision dot game object dot tag equals player then will do stuff. Now one thing this always confuses me is this collision right here. And the reason why it confuses me, because I'm used to working on 3D games. I've done quite a few sprite games, I'm not saying I haven't. But if you look at the on trigger enter, uh, it uses of type other. And I've always preferred using other for my, uh, I guess you'll say my type, my variable name. So that's one thing I want to do is just type in other because I always want to just type that in because I'm so used to calling it that it's just easier for me. So is what we're going to do. Uh, we also need to specify the game object. So the way I have this set up, if I look in here and we have enemy lights right here, which I don't care about that. I care about puzzle piece location. We have six puzzle pieces in here. So the way I want to do that is I'm going to create a serialized field of type game object. I'm going to go ahead and make this an array. Oops. And is what I want to do after I've made that an array is I'm just going to say uh, these are just going to be called puzzle pieces. And so is what I want to do is I want to say uh, or actually I need to create an int now. So I'm going to create a private int. And I'm going to call this int puzzle piece and this will say puzzle piece plus plus. So essentially what should happen, and right now if the player doesn't have the puzzle pieces and they walk into this, well, is what's gonna happen is it's going to uh, increment the puzzle pieces each time they walk into it. So if this right here, if this line of code that I have highlighted is the trigger, the player will walk into it it'll add a puzzle piece and set the next one active. They walk out, they walk back in, it'll add another puzzle piece, set the next one active, they walk out, walk back in. Same thing will continue happening. So that's not quite what we want it to do. So what we want to do is we want to say private bool and we'll call this n range. And so I'm actually going to copy this line of code. I'm going to say n range equals true. And so because I am doing that, I want the player to be able to walk in the trigger area. And once they're in range, they should be able to press a button and have it put in those pieces. So that means I'm going to have to call update because I need to check every frame to see if the player is pressing a button. So we're going to say if in range, uh, then we're going to say if input dot get. <sighs> see, I don't know what button we're going to use. Because if we do jump or we do attack, then the player is going to attack. So I do have another way around this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do get button down. And we're just going to say fire one. And so if the player presses fire one, we will do some more stuff. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go into project settings. I want to make sure it's fire one. Yeah, so see right here, fire one, it does not have a space. That means I actually need to come here and get rid of that space. Kind of important. Uh, let's see, the next thing we want to do, I want to take a swig. 
Ah, that cola. Okay, so we actually need to call the player scripts, specifically the player movement scripts. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click on player movement. I've already checked this out, so I'm good. Uh, we actually want to do something in here. And because this is a private bool, if I want the player of movement script to call this to see if this is in range, I won't be able to do it because this is a private. Uh, it's, it's a type of private variable. Uh, public and private variables. Let's look at bathrooms. If it's a public bathroom, like a Walmart bathroom, everyone can go in there. Everyone can check it out. It's constantly being used. It slows down optimization and performance. If it's a private pool, this is like saying it's a private bathroom. It is your bathroom. You're not just going to let anyone come in and use your bathroom. If it's a bum, if it's a mailman, if it's whoever, you're not going to let them come in and take a dump on your toilet. That's your commode. You are the king of your commode. So that's the difference. However, if I want to call player movement in here, I can do that. So let's say we come in here. Uh, I'm actually going to scroll all the way to the top. I'm actually going to create a public pool public pool. I'm going to call this uh, is able to shoot. And so I'm going to save that in here. Then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create another serialized field underneath this one. And this serialized field will be called player movement. And I'll just call this PM because, you know, I'm full of ideas. So what I want to do is I want to say PM equals PM dot get component component type is player movement and so we will set that in there and we're actually going to change this from on trigger enter to on trigger stay what is the difference between these two well the difference is that on trigger enter only checks to see if you have entered it if it's on trigger stay it checks to make sure that you are still there uh, you can actually do this either way in fact I think I'm gonna change this back to enter and uh, the reason why I'm changing this back to enter because I'm actually going to call on trigger exit and we're going to say if other game object dot tag equals player then we'll say in range equals false and so if in range at any point equals false I'm actually going to say pm dot uh, what I call that is something is able to shoot. So I'm going to say is able to shoot equals false. So now I'm setting that to false. Inside of here, if we come down and we look for our fire button, so we have our horizontal, we scroll down, we have our fire. We also want to say and and is able to shoot. So we want to make sure he is able to shoot or she is able to shoot. Uh, we're going to come back up here. We have right up here is able to shoot we actually need to set this to true so this always needs to be true uh, we're also going to come down here because we also have a charge attack that we need to keep into consideration so we'll say and and is able to shoot so as long as you're able to shoot you should be able to do this and here's one last one so if we ever get the button up we're going to do some stuff but we still need to specify is able to shoot so if at any point is able to shoot equals false which we are calling to equal false inside the update method it will actually say no you cannot do this stuff so let's come back in here we're actually going to say else pm dot is able to shoot equals true so why don't I have swirly brackets the reason why I don't have swirly brackets because I'm only calling one line of code I don't need them uh, that's the only reason why I don't have swirly brackets and this else statement is actually referring to this if statement up here. If I had an, if the else was right here, then it'd only be referring back to this uh, input dot get button down fire one. So blocks of code are really important to keep track of. So if we press fire one, uh, what do we need to do? Well, now we need to come back into player movement. And this is why I'm referring back to the player movement. So is what I want to do is I'm actually going to come down in here. Now this is already checking for the uh, on trigger enter. So this is already checking to see if we hit the double power up, the dash, the ground pound. This is checking everything. So what I wanted to check now is I wanted to check to see if I have collided with a puzzle piece. 
I'm going to say if other dot game object dot tag equals puzzle piece then we will increment the puzzle piece by one so I'm actually just going to throw that F right there so I can see the red dot down there at any time I'm going to come up here I'm going to say actually I need to make this a public int public int and this will be called puzzle piece increase or actually I'm just going to call this puzzle pieces so at any time we can see how many puzzle pieces we have so I'm going to say puzzle pieces plus plus <coughs> Boy. so the only downside about doing this is I'm not keeping track of how many puzzle pieces I have as a player that's kind of bad how do we do this or how do we get around this uh, is what we can do is I can actually create uh, two method groups so I'm going to call public increase pieces and this will just be puzzle pieces plus plus save game and I'm going to have a public decrease pieces I'm going to say puzzle pieces minus minus I'm going to say save game oh looks like I have an error there we go fixed so is what's going to happen is I'm actually going to call increase pieces so each time I run into one of these pieces it's actually going to increase my puzzle pieces by one it'll save the game every time I use one it'll decrease the pieces and it'll save the game so this is kind of like the beginning stages of creating a type of inventory system and it's not super efficient but it's not super bad either the reason why it's not super efficient because we have so many different things happening inside of our on trigger enter there are more effective ways of doing this that are easier to read and code this is why I like doing it it makes sense to me um, you're gonna find several people in the field who will have their own way saying why the hell are you doing it this way this is a terrible way of doing it and you might have other people say hey yeah this works this is efficient this this is fairly easy to read and understand so everyone's gonna have their opinions on it this is just the way I like doing it specifically but to each their own so uh, is what this does is this now increases the puzzle pieces the only downside is now we have to come down here I'm going to go and trigger or collapse these on trigger say and on trigger enters so inside here we're going to say player press dot set int puzzle piece I don't remember if we call it puzzle piece or puzzle pieces puzzle pieces okay so I'm actually going to copy this I'm gonna slap this in here and I can call this string anything I want this is just looking for a string so we're setting the string as puzzle pieces the int we we're saving as are called puzzle pieces so I could call this puzzle poops poopy puzzles poopy pieces it doesn't matter what I call it the part that does matter is when I come down here and I say puzzle pieces equals player preps dot get int whatever string name I have given this up here I will have to give it the str same string name down here reason why I like copying it because it's so it's a lot easier for me to copy it and it's a lot easier for me to read it uh, now I, whenever you're getting the int you don't have to have the second part here you can literally just have this right here and that is fine I like adding this in here because I feel like it kind of helps reinforce it that's my preference you don't have to do the same thing this is just my this is just like my preference like what I prefer to do so is what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to do one more if check we're gonna say if uh, PM dot puzzle pieces is greater than zero we are going to or actually I'm going to need swirly brackets on this guy so if the puzzle pieces are greater than zero then we will play a sound we'll say pm dot decrease pieces so uh, we'll actually use a piece and then we'll decrease a piece and then the next thing we want to do is we're going to say uh, puzzle pieces 
And this is a type of array. So we're going to say puzzle piece dot set active. This will be true. So above this is what we need to specify is we're going to say puzzle pieces plus plus and oh that's why okay and then we'll say puzzle oh man <laughs> this is confusing okay so this is actually my fault uh is why i should have done honestly is why i should have done is i should have done something like this where it's go underscore and then had the puzzle pieces in here so that's what I can do is come in here and simply do that. And it's a lot easier to read. So Go stands for game object, and you have puzzle pieces of type game object. And then what I'm doing is I'm increasing this int by one, which will be uh, set as that. So is what I want to do after that, or actually is what I want to do before that, is I actually want to say for int i equals zero, we're going to say i is less than go underscore that works. Uh, puzzle pieces dot length. We're going to say, ah, no, not dot. Uh, so after dot length, we're going to say I plus plus. As what I'm doing here is I'm creating an int. So for loops, you need three types of conditions. First condition is a variable type. In this case, we're specifying an int. We're specifying int I specifically, and that has to equal zero. The next part of the condition statement is saying, okay, how many ever pieces there are, we're going to keep incrementing by one until we get to the amount that we have. So if there are five, it's going to keep incrementing all the way up until we get to four. Why four? Because we're saying if it's less than. We're not saying if it's less than or equal to. If we're saying less than or equal to, then it would do it all the way up. But we're not doing that. And so as long as it's less than whatever our length is, it'll increment the i by one. And so is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do swirly brackets. You can, but I'm not going to because I'm only going to have one line of code. The one line of code I'm going to have is a puzzle pieces i dot set active false. So you might be wondering, well, what is this doing? So I'm looking at the entire array length. I'm saying get all the pieces of this array and set them all to false. We will then get the puzzle pieces, increment them. So we're going to start off at zero. We will increment them by one. And then the puzzle pieces will be incremented by one. So right now it starts off at zero. When we do this, it'll go up to one, which we'll call this array right here to go up to one. So it'll set all these inactive, but then it'll set panel a one be inactive. So I know it's a lot to take in, but that's basically what we're doing. What if we don't have enough puzzle pieces? Well, is what we can do. Say else play error sound. Easy. Do I need the uh, parentheses? I mean the swirly brackets? In this case, yes. The only reason why I do need them because I'm only creating a commented out line of code. Uh, if I had an actual piece of code to put in there, then no, I wouldn't need them because I'd only be playing, I'd only be doing one thing. But since I have uh, just a commented out line, this will throw an error because it's not actual code. Uh, whenever you're talking about any kind of programming and you have commented out lines, the software does not read those lines of code. So FYI, more you know. All right, so now I am in here. I'm slapping these pieces in. It's doing what I want it to do. What do I want to do now? Well, uh, one thing we could do is we could actually call a method group and see if they are all in there. So one way we could do this is we could say, or I'm actually going to make private void check status. And we're going to say, uh, let me think, if, see there's so many ways we can do this. I don't know if I want to do a check status or if I just want to do it in here. I think I'm going to just do it in here because I think that'd be a lot easier. So I'm just going to say check status. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to say if um, if puzzle pieces equals, so let's see, that'd be one, two, three, four, five. Well, no, it'd actually just be four because there's only four puzzle pieces for the player to collect. In fact, I can see them right up here. So if it equals four, then is what we're going to do is we're going to uh, call 
the cam nm can nm what are we calling in here well we're going to just right now kind of like put a placeholder in here so we're going to say public void uh camera action so we will save that and we'll come back in here we're going to say can nm dot uh camera action so do I need swirly brackets with this? No, I do not. Why? Because this is an actual line of code. So as long as this equals four, it'll do this. So that is how we set that up. So now we need to uh, come in here. We actually need to make another script. This script will be for the actual individual puzzle pieces. Oh man, that cola is so good. So we're going to create a C sharp script. This is going to be a very simple script. I'm just going to call this puzzle pieces. So we're going to go into the inspector. Come on, you can do it. There we go. We're going to select all four of these. And we're just going to drag puzzle pieces in here and we'll edit the script. All right, so now that we are in here, we're going to have a public float called speed. And we'll have an update. Because I already know I'm going to need an update. And we're also going to need on trigger enter 2D. So we're going to say, first I want to change this. There we go. If other.gameobject.tag equals player we will destroy said game object which is whatever this script is attached to speed what why would i want speed on here that's actually a very good question so i'm going to bring up the unity api uh, there we go so they actually have a vector 2 Vector 2, or actually, you know what? I'm just going to type in ping pong. So we have rap mode. Where is ping pong? Math F ping pong. It's not vector 2. That's my bad. So we have ping pong. We have a float. Then we have the float length. Uh, generally, you want to use, uh, whenever it's just T like this, that's usually representing time. How long does it go back and forth? And then you have the length. Well, how many units is it going? Uh, so I just know that it's going to be math F. It's going to be math F type ping pong and then time and then the length it's going for. So is what I'm going to do is I'm going to say math F or actually I would need to specifically say uh, transform dot position equals math F dot ping pong time dot delta time speed boom okie dokie oh cannot convert type oh 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 new vector I don't know if it needs to be a vector 3 or not probably not but we will try it anyways and it helps if this is one word uh, let's see does not contain a Struct. Okay, so that, uh, let me think how I can do this. I guess I could just do transform dot. No, I can't do translate. Because that actually requires uh, translation relative. Yeah, I should be able to. So this will be zero. Math F ping pong and zero. There we go. What is this doing? So we were using a transform.translate, which transform.translate requires three of your positions. X, which is zero. Y, which I have the ping pong. And then Z, which is zero. I don't want to move it on X or Z. I just want to move on Y. I basically just want it going up and down. And so we will save this. All these pieces have a thing attached to them. And so here's where I come in here. Come on. There we go. So I'm just going to set the speed to 3 for now. I'm going to hit play. I want to see what these pieces are doing. 
I basically just kind of want them like going up and down just a little bit. Don't want to maximize on play. Okay, so that is a bit much. 0.5. Okay, so I'm just going to call this by the rigid body because it is not doing what I want it to do. So that is fine. It wants to fight me. That is fine. I do not care. So we're going to say. Serialize. Oh, you bastard. Serialize field. Rigid body 2D. RB 2D. Start. RB2D equals RB2D dot get component of type rigid body 2D. Slap that on there. We're going to say vector2 dot lerp. Uh, so this is RB2D dot gravity scale. Oh, actually, I need to set these values in here real quick. So let me go ahead and create a private int and this will be called gravity up gravity down and inside of here I'm just gonna make these a public and I'm gonna change this to a float and I'm going to say gravity up gravity down and then I'm going to say uh, time dot delta time. So I have these in here. Now it can't convert a float to a vector two. And so whenever you're using alert, it's actually trying to like go between the two. I could just change this to a one or not a one. Uh, what is that? Math F is it math F dot? Yeah, it's math F dot alert. So in here, we're going to say rb2d dot gravity scale equals gravity down rb2d dot gravity scale equals gravity up so here's the issue is if we do it this way it's actually trying to constantly switch between these all the time so now I need a private counter private counter. Uh, this needs to be a float. And we're actually going to create one called a counter reset. And so we're going to say, oh, this needs to equal, eh, let's just say one. It's fine. So we're going to say counter equals counter reset. <clears throat> and then we're going to say uh, counter minus equals time dot delta time if counter is less than zero then it will do this and we're going to say counter equals counter reset and after that we're going to say if counter is less than zero I know it's still the same thing just give me a second you guys I can hear y'all just glaring at me like what are you doing counter equals counter reset so I could just do it this way and uh, I'm actually using time dot delta time here but this is actually going to allow me to get rid of this alert completely and so now I need a private bool, and we'll call this going up. And going up. And going up. There we go. That can go away. Eh. So is what's going to happen is the counter is always going to be ticking down. If going up equals true, then it's going to go up. Oh, I'm sorry, it's going to go down. If it equals false, which it does on start, it goes up. So if we come in here 
<clears throat> wait for it to compile. La. All right, so gravity up, I'm going to set this to 0.5. Gravity down, I'm going to set this to 0.5. But however, because it's gravity down, or gravity up, this actually needs to be a negative value. So if we hit play, we should see these little guys kind of going up and down. At least for one second. Okay, so let's enter negative one. I do not see the gravity scale changing. Why do I not see that? Ch oh, 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 oh. That is my bad, you guys. You think all my years of doing this, I, that's like one of the first things I would have remembered to do. Nope. So we're at negative five right now. So this should be switching. I don't see it switching, which is actually really interesting. So, uh, oh, that's why. So now we need to say going up equals false. Going up equals true. Is what was going on is we didn't specify it to switch those back and forth. And so it's just kind of like saying, oh, so you're always wanting to go up because it's set to false. That's what was going on. So now we should actually see it working properly. So it should go up for a second and then go right back down. So uh, is what's going on here is I think that it's just a little too much. Or it's not that it's too much. I think is that this just needs to be... 0.25 F because I want it to just kind of like go up and down just a little bit not too much not too extreme and honestly I probably should have made that a public variable so that way I can edit it directly in the inspector and change it to however I want but I think 0.25 should be good so they're constantly going up I think that's what I need to do is for the gravity down I'm going to change this to 0.6 So I'm noticing that they are kind of like constantly going up. So that doesn't look too terribly bad. It doesn't look the greatest, but it doesn't look too terribly bad. So that's what I'm going to do is instead of 0.6, I'm going to say 0.55, and that should be good. Should be. Yeah, so that doesn't look too bad. It really doesn't. And there are other ways you can handle this within the code. Uh, one of the other ways you can do is, uh, so we have the counter if it's looking to see if it's less than zero, then it's gonna be going up. Uh, well, this is actually backwards. It's fine, it doesn't matter. Although it is going to drive me crazy, so I'm gonna say gravity up, and this one will be gravity down. So we have the counter equals the counter reset. I could actually change these values in here and make it where whenever it's going on gravity up, it's say 0.25 F and this one is say, I don't know, 0.3 F. So it'll always kind of like go down just a little bit more. I could also set this to 0.5 and set this to just straight up one. I can do it any number of ways. So if I come back in here after changing those values, we'll see that we're getting a little bit more uh, interesting results. And because the gravity is set to be heavier when it's going back down, it'll always kind of like go back down to the ground. So see these kind of like jump up a little bit. And they will never actually just continue floating up. They'll have like this little jump but it'll never actually continue to just keep going up, which will make it easy for the player to grab them, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to test this real quick, if I can press the right keys. 
All right, well, first, before I do that, I actually want to go over here. Okay, so I actually forgot to put the script on this guy. So let's go ahead and do that. This is the puzzle piece thing, and I don't have anything for the action camera, so we are going to need that as well. But for now, let's go ahead and throw this on here. I'm going to lock this in place. I'm going to select all of my panels. I'm going to slap that on here, so we should have all of them, and we do. Let's go ahead and add a rigid body. I'm going to set this to static because this is not going to move anywhere. Next thing I need to do is add a box collider 2D specifically. And I need to do that. I'm going to turn the canvas off just temporarily. Not the puzzle piece location. It helps if I actually pay attention to what I am doing. There we go. That is better. So we have this guy right here. Let's go ahead and enlarge him. There we go. And so all it's going to do is it's just going to see if I am within range. So with any luck, if we hit play... Oh, no, we still need the action camera. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So what is the action camera going to be attached to? Well, I've already brought in my scene node. I'm going to click on cameras. I'm going to pop this bad boy on here. I'm actually going to remove this component. My scene note actually needs to be on the bottom. Easier to keep track of that way. And the cameras will be turned off. So now I need to click back on this. I'm just going to drag this back on here, right here. Right, let's test this out. So I should not be able to do anything with this. Okay, I can't. Oh, Jim, you idiot. Okay, so the reason why that just happened, uh, that's not what I need. The puzzle pieces, I forgot to set these as triggers. That's why. Additionally, I don't have them tagged yet. So let's go into here, into the player movement real quick. And we are looking for puzzle piece. So all I did was copy that real quick. I'm going to go to add tag, paste that in there, save. And I need to select all of these and tag them as puzzle piece. So I will be right back. All right, so I have relieved myself. I feel much better. And now we are going to continue on with setting all this up. So I've already set all these up. Uh, let's go ahead and test out, make sure this is working. So we already know that we can't place a piece in there if we don't have a piece. That's good. Okay, well, I just got a piece right there. Oh, we have null reference. So let's see what our null reference is. SFX, slider, give transformation... Okay, so all of these things I'm not really worried about. Although inside the scene note, I have a sound bar and a music bar. I don't need those in there. The music bar is fine. I will need to put that on there. But the SFX, I need to actually set that to zero for the time being. This will get rid of a lot of these. The player health, that one is just going to be the way it is. Mainly because uh, slider script. What is slider script? That one I don't know. Oh, this is back to the... Okay, yeah, that that's part of the soundbar. So a lot of these will actually go away except for the give transformation. But is what I am curious about is why this didn't work. So we had the puzzle piece. And we should have been given it to the player. Hey, wait, where are all my puzzle pieces?
They just decided to say goodbye. Oh. Wow. Jimmy's being an idiot again. So, these puzzle pieces, they also need a regular box collider. You'd think I would have remembered that. Okay, this also goes back to do not do the stuff when you are tired. Bad things happen. So, I'm going to paste component as new after copying it. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to turn this off. I'm actually going to decrease the size to just 1 and 1.2. Uh, so, if we look at it, we'll see that the trigger area is just slightly larger. So I'm actually going to copy this component, paste component as new, paste component, come on, oh you bastard, paste component as new, and paste component as new. There we go. So this will keep them from falling out of the world. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm actually getting really tired, so expect to see errors in my script. Uh, that's the next one down. Okay, so I just got one. For sure, for sure, just got one. There we go. There we go. Okay, so the reason why I was doing that because, one, I was pushing the wrong button. There we go. So I just need one more. I know there's ac I actually have too many. Um, but a lot of that is, like I said, I was just pushing the wrong button. So that's the only reason for that. There we go. So now this is all done. And we, I already know it called Action Cam. And so what I want to do is I actually want to do a start, uh, a check. So we're actually going to go into Puzzle Piece uh, thing. And we're actually going to do a check for all the puzzle pieces. We're going to say... going to paste this and instead of just calling these puzzle pieces because these are actually the puzzle pieces that go into the panel these are going to be called floating pieces and we're going to I think I want to do them as an array and so do I want we only have four pieces so I'm not going to do them as an array and I'm just going to copy this line. We're going to say if. Two. Three. Four. And this can be one. Dot active in hierarchy. And. Control C. Two, three, four. This is four. I know there's way better ways to do it, but this is just a really quick, not really an efficient way to check it, but it is a really quick way to do this. We're going to say PM dot uh, puzzle pieces equals zero. Or actually is what we want to do. Because anytime the player comes in here, we need to say... Puzzle pieces equals zero. And we're also going to want to save the game. So this will save the player's stats. We'll say PM dot There we go. So it'll set it back to zero and it'll say save the game. Which will require the player to start all over stuff. And at any point they leave and all the pieces are still there, they're going to have to redo it all. So now, I should be able to walk up to it and not be able to do anything. Providing I don't get any pieces. So that's what I'm going to really try and do is not get any pieces. And nothing is happening. So let me grab a piece. And there we go. So it is working. Awesome. It is working. I am happy about that. So uh, the next thing we want to do is the 
We got puzzle pieces. Where's my action cam? All right, so for the camera action, what do we want to do here? Well, what we want to do is we're actually going to start setting things active and inactive. I'm also going to call the animator component. So we're going to say serialize field of type animator, and we're going to not do that. We're going to say um, action camera. We're going to say fade image. Uh, I'm also going to specify these as NMs so I can easily distinguish them. And now we need another serialized field of type game object. And this will be called player, player camera, and action camera. This is why I changed this to action camera NM. So under here we're going to say. Uh, what are we going to say? We need to say start because we are going to have to get the animator components of those. So we're going to say action camera nm equals action camera nm dot get component, component type animator. There we go. And I can honestly just take this one line, copy it, take this, slap it in here, done. And we're actually going to say start coroutine. We'll call this camera weight, i.e. numerator. And then we're going to say camera weight. Slap this in here. Then we're going to say yield return new weight for seconds. I know that my image fade is going to last for one second, so I'm going to say um, fade image nm dot set bool. I think I remember what it's called, but I do not. And now I'm wondering where the hell I even put this. Uh, fade canvas. So I'm going to click on my image. I'm going to move this over. Go into my animator. This is called fade in. That's what it is called. Fade in. And we will set that to true. False. So we're going to say player dot set active will be false. Uh, player camera dot set active will be false. We'll say action camera dot set active will be true. And uh, we may need to do something else. I don't know yet. So we're, then we're going to fade in. So setting all that. So it'll fade in to black. And then it'll set all that stuff inverse. And once all that has been set, oh, we need to call the action camera. That's what I'm missing. So we're going to say action camera nm dot set bool. This will be called start nm. And we will set that to true. That's what I was missing. But we don't want to do that just yet because we actually want to set this, uh, we want to set this in. So it's going to fade in. It'll fade to black, wait for one second, which will be this entire fade time. It'll switch all of these around, then it'll start to fade in. So then we want to wait for a, another second. And then we'll start the animation. Boom. Just like that. I don't know how long this animation is going to last, but it's probably safe to say probably about two seconds. So let's see. It's one second. No, it's two seconds for the door to open. I'm going to say two seconds for that. So I'm going to say four seconds total. And then we're going to fade back in. We're going to wait for a, another second. And then we're going to do the inverse of all of these. 
So this would be true. True. False. Eh, I can probably do it this way. Alright, so that should all be correct. Uh, now all I need to do is just specify my animator. And... Oh, come on... There we go. So we have my cameras right here. So I need the action camera, which will be its self. Well, it doesn't have an animator on it yet, so that's fine. Player, player camera, action camera, fade image, which is this right here. And now for this, I need to create an animation for it. So I'm going to go to, well, I already have my animation window pulled up. Uh, I'm going to set this as active so I can see what's going on inside the scene very easily. I just need to figure out where this camera is at, which it is right over here. So I'm actually going to move it over here on the start. So it's going to be looking at this door, which is where the player is at. And I'm actually going to... I'm going to drag this over here. I'm going to say create. And we're going to say action camera pieces start idle. And we're going to go into assets, animation, and this will be puzzle level. And I will save this in here. And all I'm going to do is just move it a little bit this way. So by me moving it a little bit that way, uh, it's going to set its position right here. I can then click on this dot, control C, so I'll copy it. I'll come in here, create a new clip. This will be called uh, Action Camera Pieces Start Idle. So this will be Action, Save. I'll paste that in there. And I think I'm just going to make this last two seconds. So I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to hit the record button. I'm just going to drag it over to here. So what I want to do is I want to see this door opening. And there should also be lights up here that will trigger so the player will see that third light come on, and then this door will open. And so from there, I'm going to control C. I'm going to come down to create new clip, and this will be called action, or not action, but this will be called end idle. And I'll just paste that in there. And now that I am done with that, I actually need to create another one. Uh, so either I can create a door script for that, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to create a door script for this, so this way this prefab can have that script, and it can reference that script. I think that's going to be the way easier way of doing this. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back into my puzzle level. I'm going to create a new script. This will be called main door puzzle open. Wait for it to compile. There we go. Open this up. So in here, uh, the first thing I need to do is do a serialized field of type animator. And we're going to call this anim. So we're going to say start anim equals anim dot get component of type animator. And we will do that. And so we're going to say public void open door. We're going to create an int. So this is going to be called, I'm going to do a private int and we're going to say door status. And we'll say, oh, come on. Door status equals one. Player prefs dot set int status door status come in here and we're going to say player press dot get int status 
then say door status equals. From there, we're going to say if door status is equal to one, then is what we're going to do is we're going to say nm dot set bool start nm true else nm dot set bool start ah come on Jimmy start nm false boom and all I need to go all I need to do from there is I need to click on this door over here, which I thought I had. Hmm. Oh, yeah, here it is. So I have this right here, and I have an animator on it. I need to make sure that it is. Okay, so it's actually called door open. So that's why I need to call it door open. There we go. And so what's going to happen is uh, once a player opens this, it's always going to check to see where it's at. And even if the player comes back to try to go back in that room, they're actually going to see that door opening. So that's kind of cool. So the next thing we need to do is... Uh, actually, no, that's it. So I need to slap this script onto this door right here. So I'm going to wait for it to compile. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to call. I'm going to slap that over here, and I'm going to put that on here. And so now for my other uh, puzzle piece panel, uh, the next thing I need to do is check to see if we have all puzzle pieces in here. And so we have puzzle pieces equal that. Or actually, no. There's another way I can do this. The action camera. I can actually come in here and specify that in here. So I'm going to say serialize field. This is going to be called main door puzzle open MDPO MDPO equals MDPO dot get component. Component type we are getting is main door puzzle open. And is what we're going to do is whenever we do this and it comes over here uh, so right here it's waiting for four seconds. So if I change this to two seconds, well first I need to come over here and see. Uh, if I click on this, I'm going to go to Window, Animation, and if I come over here to Opening, I can see that this lasts for three seconds. So then the next thing I want to do is say this will last for three seconds. So right here, this is going to go over to the door, which I don't know how long that's going to be. But right here, we're going to say MDPO dot open door. That's what it was. So that's going to be there. And then I'm going to say yield return new wait four seconds. And that will be three because that's why I have inside the animation for that door opening. But now I need to look at my camera action right here. So I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to click on my cameras. And I can see right here for the action, it lasts for two seconds. So right here, I'm actually going to specify this as two seconds. And that is how I'm setting those times. All right, there we go. So now I can get this out of the way. I know it's a lot to take in. Uh, believe me, if I was watching this for the first time, I'd be like, whoa, whoa, what? What are you doing? I know it is a lot to take in, you guys. Uh, I'm not going to try and lie and say it's not. So let me go ahead and grab all the pieces. I'm going to test to make sure this is working. And I'm sure there's going to be some kind of bug. I wish I could say there won't be any kind of bug, but I already know there will be. Go routine. Couldn't wait because the game object cameras is inactive. Let's take a look at this. Camera wait. Couldn't be because the game object cameras is inactive. So we have action camera. Did I not 
place that in there? No, I did not. So that's the first thing I need to do. Oh, and I don't have this on here either, so I need to do that real quick. Uh, let me go ahead and slap this. Nope, it's not that one. It's this one. There we go. So that's slapped on there. That has that. So I should be able to do this now. In fact, we're going to kind of cheat the system just a little bit. So I'm going to click on this one. Control D. Control D. Control D. Control D. Hit play. Now these are probably going to fly a little bit because, you know, they're rigid bodies. But we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's see what is going on here. Well, it's inactive, but it should be getting set to be active. Okie dokie. So that's what's going on. So my puzzle piece panel... My puzzle piece panel is calling cam and m which can m and m is set as inactive and so I'll also need to specify that I'll say cam and m game object I'm just going to Yeah, that is not what I wanted to do, you guys. All right. There we go. So now it should work. I basically wasn't making it active. I thought it was, but yeah. I had my head somewhere where it didn't belong. Don't ask any questions. Don't even try to analyze that statement. So I'm going to slap this on here. We're going to hit play. It should work now. There's absolutely no reason why it should not work. Well, there is other reasons, but I don't want to get into that. It's all philosophical stuff. And play. No, you're not going to play? Oh, okay. So, is what's going on is it's doing that, but it's not quite plain. Uh, let's see if this door even got called. This will be really simple test. I'm going to turn off Maximize on Play. There we go. I'm going to hit Play. So, we should see this door open immediately. And we do not. All right, so the reason why it didn't do it, because of the Go floating pieces right here. Uh, what were these referencing, I wonder? Ah! So, we're going to slap these in here real quick. There's one, two, three, four. There we go. In fact, I'm going to come in here. Now, this is checking to see if they are all active. I'm just going to say if any of them are active. All right, so we're not getting any more errors, so that's good. But I still don't see that door opening, so something's not getting called somewhere. So let's go ahead and figure this out. We know the camera's getting called. We've seen it get called. So it's definitely getting called in there because it's switching over to it. 
However, I don't know if it's actually doing what I want it to do. So we call the camera, which is what? This is puzzle piece panel. So we're calling camera action. So let's go in here. Camera action, which calls a coroutine. So for some odd reason, I don't know if this is actually getting called or not. Uh, it's got to be getting called because it's actually setting it as inactive. But it's not playing its animation or anything like that. And I don't have any null reference exceptions within it. And also the player camera is not getting set inactive. So that is interesting. Player camera is up there and that camera is down there. So I think is what I need to do is I actually need to take this script off of this camera. I'm going to hit remove component and I'm going to click on this puzzle piece. I'm actually going to drag this on here. And so this can call, this can reference itself. Uh, I hate doing it like this. I really do. But this is the only thing I can think of that does not get called. And so is what we're going to do is we're going to drag the cameras for the action cam cameras for the action camera then we'll have the player on here that is not where I want the player to go so player goes there player camera goes here and then the fade image goes here and then we have the MDPO which goes uh, is it this one? it is that one -ha 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 -ha. so hopefully now it'll get called properly Hopefully. Okay, so the cameras are still not getting deactivated. And I don't see the other setting get set up either. So it's definitely waiting the proper amount of time but it's not doing what I want it to do, which is actually really interesting. That's actually really interesting that it's not doing... Hey, why isn't it doing what I want it to do? It would help if I save it. Well, no, actually, that shouldn't matter too much at all. So I'm actually going to do a debug dot log and we're going to say camera wait. So if it calls camera wait, I know it's at least getting into that uh, coroutine. I'm sure it's something really simple that I'm missing. I have no idea what it is, but I'm sure it's something really, really stupid and simple. Okay, so it's not getting called. Oh, we do have one. Awesome. Okay, so... Oh. Wow. Really, Jimmy? Okay, hopefully that will be it. I can't believe I forgot to do that. What the hell, Jim? I mean, you never make those mistakes. Well, apparently you do today. Uh oh, that was a delayed input. Okay, so it's setting that inactive. I'm still not seeing the message. Uh, cameras is set active, and it switches back. It's just not playing the animation for it. And the door never opened either. Well, it did get called. So camera wait did get called. That is a plus. So, uh... 
the fade image never got called and the action camera so that's being set to true but the action camera was never set to do that let's see we have action cam action camera action camera nm that's what i'm looking for action camera nm which is right here Oh, okay, I am scratching my head on this one, you guys. I am not going to lie. Hmm. Now, I have all this inside the same scene, so that shouldn't be an issue. I know exactly what it is for this one. So we're not specifying for the animation. Come on. There we go. Make transition. This is a key thing I was actually forgetting. And I feel really dumb for forgetting it. So we have uh, start and end. This is for the what is this for this is for the action camera. So that's the bool we're going to create. Let's test it now. The camera should at least move back and forth and do what I want it to do. Should. I'm not saying it will, but it should. <clears throat> And it still does not. Let's go into the animator. So it's not actually... Well, it's... Oh, wait. I know what it is. There we go. <sighs> yeah, I'm getting really tired. Okay, so... That gets called but the door still does not open. So at least now that's working. Uh, I did notice that it took a little, oh, that's because we have the fade in. So the fade in isn't quite working just yet either. So let's go into the animator. Uh, we have that set to true. So that should all be getting called. Uh, why aren't you getting called? <clears throat> let's see if it's even checking that this uh, parameter okay so yeah fade in doesn't look like it's ever actually getting called for some odd reason uh, that is really really interesting that is really interesting I know the camera is so that's a plus fade image and M so let's go ahead and click on this bad boy. Looking for fade image NM. And we are definitely getting... Oh. <sighs> Jimmy, you're just a bright shining star today. Or uh hey. -huh. Okay, sweet. So now that's working. And then it goes back to there. Okay, awesome. The only thing is the way it uh, did this is I should have actually had it wait. Uh, let's see. So it fades in. It has to wait a second. And then it sets all that to false. should be what I need, I think. Uh, 
Okay, so it still did that a little too early. Still did that a little too early. So it fades in, has to wait for one second. Uh, fades and wait for one second, sets all that. Yeah, so we're still going to want to wait for a second before it sets that back the other way. Is fade in is false. And that only goes there if fade in is true, I think. Yeah, so if fade in is true, it goes to this one. Which will then take it to fade out. Then I'll go to fade in if that's false. Okay, so I do have that set correctly. Let me see exactly what is going on in this scene. <sighs> One, two, three, and four. Okay, so it switches instantly. So, because it switches instantly, that's because the puzzle pieces in here is turning that camera on. That is why. I forgot about that. So, now we'll see it works. And then all I have to do is fix that stupid door. Don't script and program while you're tired, kids. You make some really, really stupid mistakes. I was on a roll. And now it's like, I am a roll. I'm a roll going downhill real quickly. So, yeah, that is perfect. And then that should be three seconds for that door to open. Fades out, goes back in here. That is perfect. I am happy with that. Now we can click on this guy. Let's see if this is even getting called. Chances are I've done something really stupid where it is not. Yeah, so, well, I have to wait for a little bit before I can actually verify. So, yes, this is not getting called. So, we have this right here, which calls the puzzle indoor script. So, that is correct. And then we have that right there. So, this should call that, and that should call this. Am I missing something? That is the question. So, hmm, we do a debug dot log. Well, let's make sure that the door open is getting called. Door open. So if I see that message, I'm happy. Oh, crap, I'm tired. Okay, so I'm seeing the door open message. So it's definitely getting called, which means, which means, Jimmy, you are an idiot. Wow. Really? Okay, this is why it was not open, because I was never calling it in there. Although it should have called this and opened up every time we started the scene, but I'm not going to throw a fit about that. So I just need to make sure that that is actually spelt as door open with out of space and yes it is Ugh. wow let's see what happens hey lucky there
Boy, I made some really stupid mistakes with that. And now, if we go back into the scene, we should actually see this opening up as soon as we hit play. We should. So, it is not opening up. Now, this is the part that I really need to figure out, because inside the script, it's checking the door status, and it's getting that int. So, I'm actually going to... Oh. That is why, because I have a capital S down here, so I need to have a capital S up here. Stupid mistakes. Stupid mistakes. Now, I'll have to get the puzzle pieces again. Wait, depends on which one I change. Well, no, it, won't, it shouldn't matter if I change it on one or the other. I don't think. Oh, no. Okay, it didn't matter. Awesome. So, there we go. It plays. It's awesome. I'm tired. I'm saving this. I'm going to bed. First, I need to update all my stuff. So, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Long video. A lot of errors. That's because I'm tired. Give me a break. I'll talk to you all later. Good night.